Today's video will mark the first in a series that will cover proper field procedures of running land surveying equipment. This video will focus on the very basics of Total Station's accuracy specifications. If you work with Total Stations, I'm sure you've heard the statement of accuracy before. This is a three second instrument or a one second instrument but do we fully understand exactly what this means? I have found this has often been mistaken to mean one is set up at a point that their foresight observation should be within three seconds of the true value. Let's run through an example we can build off of for the duration of this video. If we are set up at station A and take a single foresighting observation to B that is 100 feet away and we have a three second instrument, can we expect to be within the sine of three seconds times 100 feet or 1.4 thousandths of a foot? The short answer is not even close. In reality, the value will be well over three to five times that, but will also depend on many variables. Let's start off by looking at some instrument specifications and get a handle on what three seconds is actually referencing. Whether you look at a data sheet for Leica, Trimble, Topcon, etc., these days they all reference their angular accuracy to ISO 17123-3. ISO stands for the International Organization of Standardization. ISO is an independent, non-governmental international organization that brings global experts together to agree on the best way to, of doing things from making products to managing processes. This particular accuracy standard, in part, sets the standard for angular accuracy of an optical theodolite. As it pertains to our situation, ISO 17123-3 is defined as the measure of precision of theodolites is expressed in terms of the root mean square of a horizontal direction, observed once in both face positions of the telescope or a vertical angle observed once in both face positions of the telescope. To put that more simply, it's the expected error at one standard deviation of confidence of measuring a direction on both faces. There are three important things to highlight in that sentence. The first being one standard deviation of confidence. In this context, one standard deviation of confidence basically states that if we take this measurement 100 times approximately 68 of those direction measurements will land within plus or minus three seconds of the true value if we ignore all other sources of error. The other 32 measurements should fall outside of those bounds. Some could be four seconds off, others could be five, six, seven, eight seconds off, and so on. If we want to have a larger confidence interval, we would need to increase the value of that angular error. For example, if we wanted to be 95% confident or two standard deviations of how well we can measure, we would double that three seconds to six seconds. One standard deviation is three seconds, two standard devi deviations is double that at six seconds. So 95 of our measurements would be within plus or minus six seconds of the true value. Or if we wanted 99.7% confidence or three standard deviations, we would now multiply the originally provided three seconds by three. So three standard deviations, multiply the value of a single standard deviation by three and we get nine seconds. This is known as the empirical rule or the 68, 95, 99 rule which in this case estimates where our survey measurements will land due to the inevitable random error that is always floating around in our measurements. The second thing I want to highlight about that sentence is the word direction. This value is for a horizontal direction measurement. As surveyors, we may measure directions, but what we really care about is angles. We want to reference a known point to an unknown point. Every angle requires two directions or two legs, one to our reference backsight and the other to the target we are trying to locate. So to determine the angle between our reference point and our target point, we need to subtract one direction measurement from the other. If we look at the air propagation equations for addition and subtraction and use a little calculus, we can derive what we need to figure this out. 
to save you some time, you can take my word for it and use the equation. The standard deviation of an angle equals the standard deviation of a direction multiplied by the square root of two. So for our example, the three second direction accuracy turns into a 4.2 second angular accuracy. This ISO standard states that we can directly use the standard deviation supplied for vertical angles, not only directions. This is because our vertical angle is defined by gravity for the reference leg, not by another pointing to a reference station. That being said, this assumes our instrument is perfectly leveled, which as we know, nothing is ever perfect, especially in surveying. So we would need to start looking at what influence of error we are receiving from our level compensator. The third part of that sentence I would like to highlight is both faces. To meet this accuracy standard, you must take your direction measurements on both faces. If you only take a single face direction measurement, through the magic of air propagation, that three seconds turns into 4.2 seconds. And since what we really care about is angles, if you're measuring face one only, we can plug that 4.2 seconds into the previous equation and get the angular standard deviation of six seconds. To push that out further and be 95% confident, or two standard deviations, which in my opinion is a more appropriate value to use. For example, if we're laying something out, I would feel much better if I'm 95% confident versus only 68% confident. That angular accuracy now grows to 12 seconds. If we plug this back into our original equation to get an idea of how this affects horizontal distance on the ground, we go from 1.4 thousandths of a foot to 5.8 thousandths of a foot. And remember, that's plus or minus. So one day we may be negative six thou, the other day we may be positive six thou for a span of 12 thousandths of a foot over a 100 foot observation. Push that out to 300 feet, and now we're looking at a span of 34 thousandths of a foot. We also need to look at the EDM component of the total station's accuracy specification, which is most often governed by ISO 17123-4. This one is a bit more straightforward. You've probably seen something along the lines of two millimeters plus two PPM for the quoted EDM accuracy when we're looking at instrument specs. This is referring to the standard deviation of a single distance measurement. There are two components to this one. The first being the constant, two millimeters in this example, and the second being a scalar component that grows as you increase your observation length. We can plug these values back into our original example, but since this error is on the distance of a measurement, it will be exactly perpendicular to the angular error. Over 100 feet, that 2 ppm works out to be 0.1 thou of a foot, which we can ignore for now, and we are left with our 2 millimeters or 6.6 .6 thousandths of a foot at one standard deviation of confidence. But since this ISO standard is for a single measurement, and we most likely will be taking a single measurement on both faces, this gets reduced to 6.6 .6 thousandths of a foot divided by the square root of n, where n is the number of measurements, which gives us a final distance on the ground of 4.7 thousandths of a foot. Again, we will double this to two standard deviations of confidence to get us up to 95%, and we're left with a semi-minor axis of our error ellipse of 9.3 thousandths of a foot. You can see how our accuracy starts to degrade rather quickly when we get a full picture of what is actually going on. And this is only including random error. And remember, we can never eliminate random error, only reduce it with additional observations and taking the mean. These values assume that you have removed all sources of systematic error. If I can highlight anything in this video, let it be this next point. This is not the accuracy you can now expect of your total station measurement. These two ISO standards cover pointing and reading error and the EDM error. We have completely ignored the following sources of error. Instrument centering error, target centering error, height of instrument measuring error, height of target measuring error, reflector centering error, pole plumbness error, error due to temperature and atmospheric conditions, collimation error, 
tilting axis error, compensator index error, vibrations and tripod instability, the optical slash laser plummet being out of calibration, EDM out of calibration, instrument not acclimatized properly, and this is just to name a few. We will talk about how to handle and reduce some of these errors in subsequent videos. Two key takeaways of today's video are, if you are concerned about accuracy, always use both faces of your instrument, and the stated accuracy of an instrument can give you a false sense of quality of your measurements, and it is far from the end all and be all when it comes to the accuracy of your final coordinates. Check out my video on air propagation of a total station and using the simple air propagation program I wrote to get a better idea of the accuracy you can expect when taking total station measurements as it takes a more holistic approach by looking at some of the other variables. In that video, I will provide a link to a white paper that goes into detail of the air propagation equations pertaining to total station observations, and also provided free at no cost is my simple air propagation program. Thanks for stopping by, and subscribe if you want, like if you feel it's warranted, and I'll see you next time.